All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting in just a moment. Uh, we're just going to let some more people log in. If you're just getting here, please say hi in the chat and let us know if you can hear. All right, it's uh, we are officially live. We actually went live a couple minutes early, but we're gonna give everyone a couple more minutes to get in here because we opened the room up a little bit early. Just wanna point out that um, after the presentation, we will take questions live. Um, so get your cameras and mics ready if you have questions and um, Jennifer or me would love to answer your questions. Um, I think that's what we like the most is, is random questions. So uh, be prepared for that. Uh, we will prioritize people who raise their hand uh, and have their camera ready, but we will also try to get some, um, um, some questions from the chat, but we will prioritize the camera people. <laughs> Okay, we think we're gonna wait just one more minute because I see people are still logging in and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. Someone's asking how do they turn on a camera? A couple people are asking, so I don't know, Adrian, if you have any advice. Yeah, that happens after you hit the speak button and you're accepted into the room. It kind of asks you, you know, to connect your camera and the mic. So it kind of doesn't happen before then. But if you had a camera needed to plug it in, that's why I mentioned it. Or if you needed to fix your hair or <laughs> so, then, uh, uh, then, then you will be prioritized for sure. Um, we'll ask, we'll take live questions. So. What do you think, Adrian? Should we start? Yeah, I think we can get it going. All right. Why don't you uh, introduce what we're doing today, and then I'll go from there. Yeah. Um, so um, we are Scholarship Owl, and what we do is we're trying to help students uh, win scholarships and getting through college debt-free, which is our statement. Uh, we do have a platform, when we, but we do offer a lot of extra services like this. It's completely free for you guys to join and today we're going to talk about the most pressing topic uh, that we can have, and this is a very popular topic, and that is essay writing. Now, it turns out that people are very intimidated by essay writing, but it turns out that it's a lot easier to win essay scholarships than it is to win non-essay scholarships. And there are methods to the madness, uh, and it's not as hard as you think it is, and Jennifer is an expert of explaining how to do it. She's been doing this for, for 20 years. So, um, Jennifer, I'll let you... Um, uh, present and um, I'll leave it to you. All right. Uh, I am seeing some questions in the chat. I just want to quickly uh, respond to them. Um, as Adrian mentioned a moment ago, um, you'll be asked to turn on your camera as we get to the Q&A. So don't worry if you don't see a way to turn your camera on right now. 
Um, and somebody's asking how long the webinar is. It's normally an hour, but sometimes it goes a little bit over because um, I try to answer as many questions as we can, and we typically do get a lot of questions. Uh, and uh, so, you know, don't worry if it goes a little bit over. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the uh, slide deck. Okay, so if you are in the process of applying to colleges or applying for scholarships, you know that the quality of your essays is critical. One of the most common questions I'm asked is what can I do to ensure that my essay helps my application stand out from the crowd so that I can get into the college I'm targeting or earns me the scholarship that I'm applying for? If you've been wondering the same thing, you're in luck, because today I'm going to share the top 10 tips and strategies for writing standout essays. These are strategies that I've found to be helpful for my own kids, as well as for the students I've worked with. So let's take a look at what we're going to go ahead and cover today. In today's webinar, we will discuss how to approach writing an outstanding application essay, covering everything from how to select which prompts to respond to, how to develop a plan for your essay, how to set the hook in your intro, and also the actual mechanics and process you should apply when developing your application essays. We will go over tips and strategies that ensure your essay is noticed and remembered, and also discuss the importance of feedback rounds and time management strategies. You'll probably have questions as we go along, and that's great. Um, as we talked about before, uh, you can either jot them down and then after the presentation, we, you can ask them during our live Q&A, or if you prefer, you can also input questions into the chat and we'll try to get through them as well. But our first priority will be responding to students who want to ask their question live on video at the end. And for those who watch through the entire webinar, we will be offering a special thank you gift. So we'll talk more about that at the end of the webinar. So your application essay provides a window into who you are and why the admissions rep should care about you. So it's a, cr a critical component of your college application or your scholarship application. All factors being equal, a powerful essay may just tip the scales in your favor or could tip them against you if another candidate's essay is more compelling than yours. A well-written essay demonstrates your creativity, uniqueness, and grasp of language and grammar. These are factors that can definitely influence an admissions rep. These same factors can also persuade a financial aid advisor to offer you a scholarship. If you're a strongly qualified student, your essay can reaffirm your GPA and test scores and solidify you in the eyes of the college rep. Alternatively, if there are gaps or issues in your qualifications, such as perhaps you feel your GPA or test scores don't truly represent your capabilities, or perhaps you have outstanding academics but haven't participated in extracurriculars to the level that you wish you had, your essay can bridge the gap. The essay offers an opportunity for you to showcase your best assets, even within the constraints of a very specific essay topic. And that's something we're going to discuss in greater detail a bit later on in the presentation. Because we're currently in college application season, I'm sure that many of you are working on your college application essays. So I'll probably lean a bit more into talking about those kinds of essays. However, the information is just as relevant for applying to scholarships. So either way, what I'm sharing with you today will relate to both types of essays. So that all said, I'm gonna take a moment to talk about college application essays. If you're applying to colleges with the Common App, you'll be required to respond to one essay question and you'll have several prompts to choose from. But be aware that many colleges will ask you to respond to one or more additional essay prompts beyond what's required by the Common App. And if you're applying to any of the University of California campuses, you'll be required to respond to four personal insight questions. Apply Texas offers three essay prompts, but depending on the school, sometimes you might only need to respond to one or two of them. And some of you may be using the Coalition app, which is now accepted by some private colleges. Bottom line, be sure to visit the website for each college you're applying to so that you know what type of application they accept and set so that you know what their application essay requirements are so that you aren't surprised. Whichever application you're using to apply to colleges, be sure to read the essay instructions in detail. This is also relevant when applying for scholarships. Okay, this applies to all essay types, whether you're applying for scholarships or applying to colleges. Adhere to the instructions. This is not the time to try to break or bend the rules. If the essay has a minimum or maximum word count or character count, stick to it. If the essay requires a specific font style, size, margin, double spacing, etc., make sure that you adhere to the requirements. Always write your college application essay or scholarship essay 
either in Google Docs or in a Word doc that you save on your computer. When you're finished and are ready, submit. If the application has a form for you to use for your essay, copy and paste your finished essay into the form, review to ensure your formatting is still there, and fix it if it isn't, and then submit. Never write an edit and edit your essay directly into the form, because if their system times you out before you submit, you'll risk losing your essay. Now that all said, if you're applying for scholarships through the Scholarship File platform, you can use our integrated text editing tool. That tool is similar to Google Docs, so your essay will be automatically saved within the program. You want to read your essay prompt thoroughly and break it down into pieces to be sure you understand exactly what is being asked. Stay on topic throughout your essay. Make sure your essay actually responds to the topic, because all too often, students start on topic, but then they meander away from it later on in their essay. When approaching an application essay, it's critical you take time to do some research. Now, you may be saying, but an application essay isn't a research paper. Why do I have to do research to write it? So let me explain. Even though most application essays are not a research paper, you still need to do your due diligence and research the organization that's offering the scholarship or that is accepting students for admission. So for example, for those of you who are targeting a particular college for admission, it's imperative that you take time to research that college. And honestly, it's important that you research every university you are applying to, especially the more selective universities. What are they looking for when making admission decisions? Most universities will have this information on their website. While, of course, this is important when deciding which colleges to apply to, it is also important to do this when preparing to write a college application essay or a scholarship essay for a particular university. Having this information will enable you to tailor your essay, enabling you to showcase how you fulfill what they're looking for in a student and how you'll fit with their campus culture. Doing your research is also important when applying for an essay offered by a nonprofit organization or corporation. For example, Let's say you're applying for a scholarship offered by a company you've never heard of. You'll want to research the company to find out who they are, what they do, and what they care about. This will then help you decide how to focus and tailor your essay to ensure the people who read your essay will feel more connected to your essay and through your essay to you. After you've done this research, think about how you fit in with what the university or company or organization cares about and jot some notes down about yourself as it relates to the research you've conducted. Then, show your notes to your parents or another adult who knows you well. Describe what you found out when conducting your research and talk about the notes you've written about yourself. Ask for their input and suggestions because chances are that person will have additional insight that you can leverage as you move on to the next step. Now it's time to create your outline. Start by copying and pasting the essay prompt on the top of your document so that you can easily refer to it. Next, create a rough outline similar to the way you've created outlines for essays in school. If the maximum allowed word count is pretty short, then you might only have three paragraphs for your essay, a short intro, a longer body paragraph, and a short conclusion. If the maximum allowed word count is more flexible or longer, then your essay might have four or five paragraphs, an intro, two to three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. Organize your outline according to the number of paragraphs you anticipate you'll have. Within each section of your outline, jot down ideas for what you would like to include. No need for complete sentences, just notes are fine. Be sure to review the essay prompt periodically to ensure that what you're including in your outline responds to the prompt and to ensure that you're responding to the entire question rather than just a portion of it. Once your draft outline is complete, review what you've written and think about what makes you unique. Consider your academic abilities, your skills, talents, volunteer service, extracurriculars, etc. What will you be majoring in? How might your major impact what you write about in response to this prompt? Consider your personal background and challenges you've encountered and overcome. How much of any of this have you incorporated into your outline? If you feel that you missed some things that you would really like to share, consider the essay prompt again and see what you can do to incorporate at least some of what makes you unique into your outline in a way that strengthens your response to the essay prompt. Avoid trying to cram details into your essay if they're going to pull you off topic, but if there is a way to incorporate some of these details about yourself into the essay while still staying on topic, update your outline accordingly. If needed, you can eliminate some things that were previously in your outline too, so long as you do so while keeping the essay prompt in mind. Think about what you learned in school about writing essays. Essays require time and planning. Don't rush, especially with an essay this important. After starting with an outline, you'll proceed to writing your first draft. Then you'll review and edit your essay in a second round and do it again for a third round and possibly a fourth or a fifth round if needed. Bottom line, don't start your application essay the night before it's due. 
But of course, if you're in a bind and want to apply for a scholarship that has a fast approaching deadline, maybe even a next day deadline, I'm not advising you to not apply. Of course, it's always better to apply early, but if you simply can't, you should still apply for the scholarship. You can still use the tips and strategies in this webinar to help increase your chances of earning the scholarship. Because of course, if you don't apply for a scholarship, you have no chance of earning it. But if you do apply, you do have a chance, even if you're applying at the last minute. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual process of writing your essay. When creating your rough draft, once again, start with the essay prompt at the top of your document. Begin writing the introduction, using your outline as the starting point. Strong essays have a hook that pull the reader in from the get-go. What will your hook be? Each essay, question, I'm sorry, each essay reader may be reading hundreds of essays. Put yourself in their shoes. Would you want to read the same kinds of essays over and over again? Your eyes would likely glaze over. You'll need to make sure that your essay has a strong intro to ensure that your application reviewer is paying attention. With that in mind, spend some time on this first paragraph and do your best to set that hook while also ensuring that your first paragraph appropriately conveys the key points that will be discussed in your essay. Be sure to show, not tell. This is really important. It's easy to say, I love playing soccer. I've been a competitive soccer player for the past seven years and I've made significant contributions to my high school's varsity team. But it takes more thought and care to truly show the reader how and why soccer is important to you. The best way to do this is by sharing details and examples that demonstrate your commitment to the sport. A UC admissions consultant with a blog called Ask Ms. Sun said it this way in a recent blog post. Follow the format of, this is what I want you to know. This is an example showing you what I want you to know. This is what I just told you. Here's an example. Soccer is truly integral to my life. In addition to training with my team every day, I also devote my personal time to training, running drills and practicing shots on goal in my backyard before I get ready for school. I also do weight and cardio training in a fitness center to build strength and endurance. My younger sister is an avid soccer player as well, and I take time to work with her and her team every week as well. I am a top ranked player in my state and would love to be a Duke University Blue Devil as I know I would be part of an elite team that would truly challenge me. See the difference? And this is important for both application essays and scholarship essays. Next, write the body paragraphs for your essay using both your outline and introductory paragraph to get you started. Be sure to review the essay prompt often to be sure that you're staying on topic and always remember to show, not tell. Draft your concluding paragraph, being sure to summarize the points made in the preceding paragraphs while also ending with a compelling final sentence. Within this paragraph, you'll want to refer back to the essay prompt in what you write, ensuring the reader connects the dots appropriately. Review your essay in entirety, tweaking the phrasing where needed. Chances are you'll need to adjust your intro paragraph a bit now that you've written the entire essay, as you've got greater perspective now, and you'll probably have a better arc throughout if you make some adjustments to that first paragraph. Check your word count. How close are you to the maximum word count? If your essay is significantly under the maximum word count, go back into your essay and build it up further with more detail. If you are significantly over the word count, check to see what you can easily trim down. If you are over the word count, but not significantly over, then congratulations, you are where you should be for a first draft. I know that I already told you about the importance of starting early in a previous strategy, but here it is again. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you start early so that you'll have plenty of time to edit, get feedback, and edit again. But of course, when applying for scholarships, better late than never in any case. Because remember, you can't get a scholarship if you don't even apply for it. That said, if at all possible, I recommend you wait at least one full day before starting your second draft of the essay. You'll have a fresh perspective, enabling you to have greater insight into what edits are needed. Review your essay thoroughly. Review the essay prompt and make sure your essay appropriately answers the entire prompt. Assuming that you've exceeded the maximum word count somewhat, look for ways to trim your essay down to the appropriate length. Review and fix any grammatical punctuation and spelling errors. Review your essay to ensure you haven't used any specific words repetitively, as well as to ensure that your content in general isn't repetitive. This is a common problem, especially for students who have written essays that are under the word count. If you find that you've overused certain words or ideas, make necessary revisions to resolve. Refrain from plugging in synonyms you can find in a thesaurus to make it sound like you have a big vocabulary. If you do, it's likely the essay readers will recognize your grasp of the English language, I'm sorry, will recognize that you've done this. Instead, if you feel your vocabulary doesn't reflect your grasp of the English language, review what you've written and think about how you might elevate your writing without relying on the crutch of a thesaurus. 
Consider your tone and writing style to confirm that they will reflect the writing skills of a student entering college and to confirm that you come across as emotionally connected to what you're writing about. This is important. If you seem emotionally disconnected from your subject, your essay will feel flat to the reader. Refer to your outline and notes about what you wanted to cover in your essay. Have you hit all the points you planned? Did you leave anything on the table? And if so, do you want to make changes to incorporate anything that's missing? Or do you feel that the missing points can be omitted? Address any of these issues and finish up your edits so that you have a completed second draft ready. It's important that you obtain feedback. There are, of course, several options for feedback. You can ask different people in your life to read your essay and give you feedback, such as your parent or guardian, a teacher, a guidance counselor, a college admissions advisor. Once you've received feedback, consider it and incorporate the recommended edits that you agree with, keeping in mind the word count, as well as your own view of the recommendations that have been made. Remember, this is your essay, and it should reflect your own thoughts, ideas, and experiences. Refrain from allowing an adult to rewrite your essay for you. Admission reps and scholarship application readers are pretty savvy and will likely be able to tell if someone else has written much of your essay. After all the effort you've spent on this essay, it could be tempting to rush to upload it and finally click the submit button on your application. But it is so important that you take the time to review your essay again and ask your reviewers to do the same. Be sure your essay is error free, no spelling errors and no punctuation errors. If you have been using track changes in Microsoft Word, or if you've been editing within Google Docs, you may find that while making the changes, you accidentally omitted a comma or a period. Be sure to review your essay thoroughly and fix any issues you find. You should also reread the instructions for the essay and confirm that your document is formatted per the requirements and confirm that you're within the required word count. Most college application essay topics and scholarship application topics lend themselves to a personal narrative meaning that you likely will not have to do much, if any, research to write your essay. But there are some scholarship essay topics that are likely to require some research. If this is the case for you, it should go without saying that you will need to cite sources of any data or information that you found online or through resources at your library, etc. And it should also go without saying that you must ensure that all writing is your own. Do not plagiarize or create the appearance that you're plagiarizing. If you have access to a Turnitin account or something similar that can do a plagiarism check, I highly recommend you use it. Once you're certain that your essay is the way you want it, you should be good to go. You can then follow the upload instructions on the application or copy and paste it into the essay window. Next, go through the entire application to be sure you've completed everything and attached any required documents. Once you know the application is complete and accurate and your essay or essays are attached, click the Submit button on your application. So some tips to remember, write about something that truly matters to you and that also responds to the essay prompt. If you're writing about computer science, what is it about that field that fascinates you? What do you hope to accomplish once you have your degree? Be emotionally connected to your subject and show that in your writing. I have read many draft application essays and I find that this is one of the most common issues I come across, that the writer seems disconnected or indifferent in their emotional tone. Show your passion and determination. Choose words and phrases that let that come through in your writing. If there are things you want to communicate about yourself, find ways to put a bit of that into your essay without going off on an obvious tangent. This can be challenging if the essay prompt isn't really related to what you want to discuss. You might not be able to convey everything you would like to, but you may be able to integrate one or two points that support the topic. If possible, incorporate a brief anecdote that demonstrates your emotional connection to the subject and that can also showcase your ability to problem solve a situation. Review your use of figurative language, syntax, vocabulary, etc. Your writing should be collegiate in style and tone while still being personal, reflecting who you are and what you care about. Always proofread carefully and get feedback on your essay. As a thank you for attending this webinar and staying on through the live Q&A with me and Adrian, which will start momentarily, we're offering a checklist tool to help you. My application essay checklist is an invaluable tool you can use throughout the essay writing process, whether you're applying to colleges or applying to scholarships. This is an ideal companion for this webinar, and I know you're going to find it a helpful resource. So stay on with us now to be sure you're able to receive this after the live Q&A. And uh, I'm going to now send it back to Adrian. Thank you, Jennifer. That was excellent. <laughs> I hope you guys got some value out of that. Um, you know, there there's a few questions. Uh, and Jeffrey asked if do you guys revise and edit essays? 
You know, as a um, courtesy, I'm going to put Jennifer on the spot here, okay? But uh, I will uh, offer Jennifer to the six first people who go to scholarshipowl.com forward slash blog, read about the Halloween content, make an entry and send an email to Jennifer and with your entry and say, hey, I made an entry to your contest. And if you make an entry, the six first one will get six free essay reviews from Jennifer. Is wow. that okay, Jennifer? It is okay. And that's, that is quite a gift, really, because that's a service that we normally charge for. Yep. Um, we don't charge a lot, I don't think. I think it's actually a very reasonably priced service. However, um, if you can get it for free, why not? Why not? <laughs> so, uh, so again, uh, if you go to scholarshipowl.com forward slash blog, there is a Halloween competition we're running. Follow the instruction, enter it, and then contact Jennifer. Jennifer, your email is jenniferf at scholarshipowl.com. Yeah. You want me to put it in the chat? Yeah. Okay. All right, and so just so you guys know what the Halloween what the Halloween contest is, it is a costume parade contest. So we are asking students to put on their Halloween costume and take a picture or submit a video. It's very simple. Um, you know, if you've got an old costume, it doesn't have to be something new. It can be something older that you've got. We just want to see it, and uh, and you can do the right hashtags, and then you can enter the contest. Yeah, it's really cool. I know the students are home bored. <laughs> Can't go out. <laughs> so, uh, so this will be amazing. This will be really cool. We have some good prices. You can actually win the MacBook Air. And in all fairness, we don't really have a lot of uh, entries right now. So that means there's a very good chance for you to win. <laughs> for sure. So, uh, uh, Seth, how are you? Yeah, can you hear me? We oh, can. Yeah. Yes. I just logged into my Instagram, and there's the Halloween uh, competition required essay. No. Oh, no, no essay required for that. <laughs> you, you, you post a, a video of yourself in your costume. Uh, yeah, and, or a photo, and, either one. Or a photo, yeah. And that's the, I can't get access, but I'm a, I'm a member of Scholarship Bound. I have an account. But when I attempt to apply for a scholarship, it says members only, and I request access, and I still can't. I can press the click button, and I can see the description and everything, but I can't seem to to uh, actually apply for it. And I went on the Scholarship Bowl Facebook page and I still, it sent me to a link on, on a couple of them. Yeah. But are you, are you able to call us, um, you know, during like tomorrow during business hours? And I mean, we have a whole support team that can help you with that uh, and guide you through the whole process. Um, no. Yeah. Just go to scholarshipbowl.com and then contact us. And there's a the phone number there. I'll also post it here on the chat, but then they will, they will take care of you. Uh, and they will help you to guide you through that if that's okay. Okay, one last question. Uh, I'm doing several uh, uh, scholarship applications. I mean, essay essays at, at one time for different scholarships, like big scholarships, like the Horatio Alger Scholarship and um, the Prudential Scholarship. And the, 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 the word count requirement is 250. And I end up exceeding it, so I have to cut my uh, of, of words short. Sure. And I can't express myself until like two or three sentences per paragraph, like I want to. Yeah, I know it's really tough. You know, sometimes people get all excited and they think, oh, it's great. It's a short essay requirement. How easy. Sometimes the shortest ones are the hardest ones to do because it's hard to communicate everything you want to communicate. Um, the good news for you is that every single person applying to that scholarship is having the exact same problem, right? So they all have to trim their words down. They all have to find a way to present themselves and their interests in a shorter, tighter way. Um, what I find is that if you allow yourself to write a little bit longer, you know, you don't want to go crazy. You don't want to write a 1,000 word essay and have to trim it down to 250. But I find if, if I'm presented with an essay that's, you know, let's say, you know, 400 words and it's got to be 250, I can always find ways to trim it. So number one suggestion for you would be to join that Halloween contest so I can help you with your essays. Um, okay. but beyond if, you, that, if you do go do that like today, there's a very yeah. good chance you'll be one of the first six yeah. 
You know? <laughs> I'm gonna have a hard time finding a Halloween costume. <laughs> well, you can be creative, you know. You'll be yeah. surprised what you find in your closet. Yeah, yeah. But um, but in any anyway, um, that's you know what I would suggest is write a little bit over and then try to trim it down. Um, the other thing that's a really great way to do this is even if you don't get my feedback, get the feedback of another person you trust, like a teacher at school, your guidance counselor, right. or a parent. And just say, hey, help me. I've got to cut 100 words out of this. What do I do? You can bet that they will look through it because they didn't write it. You know, they're not as directly invested in the writing. They'll be able to look at that and go, oh, that sentence isn't really important. Oh, what if you cut this part out? So it's really helpful to get feedback so that you can trim it down. But as I said, I'd be happy to help you. So uh, hopefully we'll get to work together. I'm having someone edit it now. Uh, cool. Someone in a, in a, in a, uh, a connection for me and i look forward to the next webinar thank you you're welcome yeah. and and again for the uh the halloween competition there were some questions in regards to this uh scholarship com forward slash blog yes you need social media so if you don't have that unfortunately you can't join um that is just the nature of this competition we will run competition that doesn't require social media at some point but basically you follow us on instagram you post a video photo of yourself in the halloween costume uh, and you share it to your story and you're tagging us. Uh, and, and that is about it. Uh, and it's a very straightforward. Uh, and if you're one of the six first persons, <laughs> send an email to Jennifer and we will um, review your essay for you, which is amazing. And um, one other thing is that uh, I started a poll here. Uh, and it's actually the poll is asking what online community tools do you prefer? So if all of you can see that poll and answer that, that will be amazing because we are going to start a community that we're going to run for free uh, and kind of it's gonna be a community where we help students. And also we're going to gather a lot of students there. And we're not sure what channel you guys <laughs> like to use to communicate. And we would like to communicate. Discord. Discord. Okay. That seems to have 42% of all the votes there. So. <laughs> awesome. Well, the set, I'm gonna. Uh, there's a few others here. So, do you have more questions? Okay. Uh, will, will we be informed if there's a if if there's a decision to go to the Discord? Receive the email. Yeah, oh, definitely. Whenever we start a community, we were going to be emailing everybody that's on our email list. So, if you're a member of Scholarship Owl, if you aren't yet a member, but you're on our contact list, you'll all get emails indicating when we're starting our community. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Seth. So the next one, um, I think, is Libing Rodas. I'm not sure if I said your name correct. You're next. I hear some mic in the background, so I think Jennifer is getting ready. I, I can't hear the other person, so. Um, Hello? Oh, there you go. Hi. 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 How can I help you? Oh, sorry. I didn't know it was me. Um, I wanted to go over the fifth slide. Um, talked about apply for essay. Okay. Um, what did you need help with? I didn't write anything down. I forgot what you said. Okay. Let me uh, let me go back in my own slide deck here, and I will. Find it was the slide after outline. Okay. So it's the one about starting early when you write your first draft? Um, yes, I think so. Okay. And what questions did you have about figuring out how to manage your time, <laughs> which is always hard? I just, I just wanted to know what was the topic of the slide. So oh. I can just like write, write down ah, about it. Okay. Uh, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're taking notes. But good news for everyone watching, including you, is that there will be a link sent to your email with a replay of the entire webinar so that you can actually watch it. You can take notes as you watch. You can pause it, start it up again, rewind. So, so yeah, you'll be able to get that link. And I think, um, Adrian, is that coming out tonight or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Uh, okay. What we'll do is that we will um, we'll organize it with question and topics. So it's just not long, one long video that they can just jump around. So we'll do that tomorrow. So by tomorrow afternoon, it should be live or tomorrow morning before 12, I think. Yeah. Cool. Oh, okay. So, so you know, number five was start early when writing your first draft. Okay. Um, let me see here. Start early. Right. Sorry, I'm just writing it down. That's <laughs> okay. Um. 
Um, I also had a question. You said don't use synonyms. Yes. So it's not that you shouldn't use synonyms. I find, though, that sometimes I'm reading a student's essay and a synonym will stand out like a sore thumb because it doesn't quite fit the style of the yeah. writing. I'm thinking, aha, this person used a thesaurus to come up with this word. So you just want to make sure that the words and phrases you select sound like they fit with the rest of your essay so that they don't stick out, if that makes sense. Yeah, this makes perfect sense. Okay. Um, sure. All right. Anything else? Or should we move on? To um, let me see here. Um, no, I don't think it is. Oh, yeah. You said you use Google Docs in Word and then you said to transfer it to something else. Yes, because sometimes when you're applying for a scholarship or you're applying for college, there'll be an online form. And I always tell people, don't just type your essay into the form. Type it somewhere else, save it so that you have it, and then copy and paste it into the form. Because so often you'll be typing and writing and it takes a while because you're thinking and everything. And then all of a sudden it times out and you lost everything you wrote. So definitely don't write it live in the application. You want to write it elsewhere, save it, and then copy and paste it in. Oh, so like download it to like a PDF or download it to like Google Docs? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Yeah, Lai, Lai Bing, you can go. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to click me out. Um, I don't know how to click it out. How do you do this? Turn video on. Turn. We see you now. Yeah, we see you just fine. You can so go forward and ask your question. Oh, I was trying to turn the audio off. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get out of the room. <laughs> oh, you're trying to leave the room. Yeah. I'm trying to leave the the group chat room. I don't know how to do that. Okay. Um, I can turn off the audio. So who is talking now? I'm me? I'm Ani? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll kick you out if you don't mind. <laughs> okay. okay. There you go. Hold on. <laughs> yep. Okay. And someone's talking and I can't hear. I think you're muted. I don't yeah, know. her mic is not connected properly, I think. Oh. There you go. No. Okay, we, we see you, but we can't hear you. We still can't hear you. Um, She's going to town. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you're muted or can you tell Adrian if she's muted? I know she wasn't muted. It's, it seems like her mic goes in and off. Now it's on and then I can see it's on, but I can't hear her. We can't hear you. We can see you move your lips. So I think there's, so while you're working on that, we'll just take the next one. And then if we hear you speak, we just keep it open and then you go next if that's okay for you. And then you can tinker around with your computer. Uh, and then if not, uh, just write in the Q&A and we'll answer it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. I think it's Thomas. I think you need to connect your mic as well, Thomas. There you go. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, Thomas. Hello. Uh, I just wanted to say, first off, um, I really appreciated the slideshow. Um, so I have a question uh, about starting the hook. Uh, okay. Sometimes I have I have trouble with um, a blank canvas, and it's sort of intimidating. But I just wanted to see if I can get further details on how I can be not too specific and not too, you know, broad in a hook. Yeah, you know, it's it is always challenging to start. I mean, I think in any paper, the hardest part. Uh, hold on some of my there we go. Um, I think in any paper, the worst and most intimidating thing is the blank page in front of you when you've got to start. So I totally understand um, what I would say is if you are having trouble getting started, then write a very rough opening paragraph and just say to yourself, I'm going to come back to this. This isn't ready for, for prime time. I'm just going to jot something down here and then go to your body paragraph and start writing that. Um, and if, if you have an outline first, you can do that. You know, you can kind of put just a very brief intro together. Start with your body paragraph, then go back to your intro, because once you've written the body, you'll have a better idea of what you want to talk about in your intro. Um, 
so that's how I would approach it if you're really struggling with that. The other thing is, um, you know, the hook is the whole paragraph, but the most important hook is the opening first sentence. So okay. if you can't think of a cool creative first sentence, just come back to it. Do that at the end. Come back to the beginning of your paper and go, OK, now I've, I've written my basic intro. I've written my body and I've written my conclusion. Aha. Now I know how I want to start the paper. Because sometimes that's what it comes down to is you just need to sort of think through the whole process and then you come back to the beginning and, and redo the intro. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, still can't hear you. <laughs> you might try um, putting your question in the chat and just typing it in and I'll make sure that Adrian. Yeah, we, we got her question. So, but um, um, let's see if she can. Um... Okay, so let's uh, let's go with Ein. Ein sorry, Einsley. Um, I'm very bad with names. Uh, That's okay. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can see you too. That's okay. wonderful. Okay, cool. Um, I had two questions. So the first one was, would it be a good idea to get social media? Because I don't have it, but I don't know how many scholarships like use that. Is it a good thing to have? Yes, I do think it's a good idea to have social media. I don't think you have to be super active. You know, there are a lot of people that don't post very often, but it's good to have an account for a number of reasons. One, because in a case like, for example, if you're um, a scholarship owl member, we post things on our social media and you would be able to monitor that and look at that. And then you'd find out we're doing a contest or we promote certain scholarships to try to get people to apply. Um, and I'm sure there are other scholarship providers and organizations and colleges that do the same thing. Um, especially if you're applying to colleges, it's really nice to follow their social media and see what's going on. Um, the other thing is, depending on where you're applying to college, um, sometimes the private universities, you know, they really like to see students that are interested in them and they want to, you know, so like if you're applying, they're going to look at this and they might look you up and they might look for your social media platform. So it's really nice to be able to have some kind of a social media platform for yourself, um, even if you don't use it very often. Well, I, have, I I need to say something there. <laughs> okay. You know, there's also another side of social media. And yes. look at the social dilemma on Netflix, okay? Like, if you haven't opened that Pandora box, then maybe you shouldn't. It's like, I get, I get tell, like, if it wasn't for work, I probably would not be on social media. It is, uh, it, and especially not now during the election. And so, so just know that, you know, you're letting positive things into your life, but you're also letting in some negative things uh, about your life, you know? And people are typically different on social media than they are in person. Uh, they have a lot more empathy in person than they have on social media. They say things as a poor communication form and they're just right out trolls there. And people have this altered ego on, on social media. So you might find out they will distance you from some friends. I, I, I mean, I'm saying like there's downsides to it on, on a personal level. Just be aware of that. So I don't want to push you in there because of scholarship. Ali, if there is a reason you're not on social media, just want to make sure that, 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 but there definitely are a lot of benefits, but social media requires discipline. It really does. So I, I really have a lot of respect for people who have made that conscious decision. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. <laughs> yeah, I decided not to because I thought, like, knowing me, I would probably waste a lot of time on it, and I just wanted to focus, you know? Yeah. So, but I, I, I don't I know. I was that. considering <laughs> To, to just know that there has been the richest people in the world, engineers with billions of dollars, sits there every day, figure out how to get your attention. And somehow, <laughs> they're going to get your time. I mean, that's what they're designed to do. So it's very good that you're mindful about your time. It's uh, I really like what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the other question was literally, um, I don't know if it's okay to ask, but could I ask you like a punctuation in this sentence? Sure. Okay, so I had a sentence that said she was known as that quiet smart girl. How would I punctuate that? Okay. Like the part that, should I put it in parentheses, like in, I'm sorry, in quotes, in quotes. or would I? No. Um, I mean, you could, you could put that smart girl in quotes. You, that could be a choice that you make. And then you put the period inside the quote if that's the end of the sentence. Um, yeah. Or you could leave the quotes off. That's kind of up to you. Like if you're being a little bit, if you want to come across a little bit sort of sarcastic, that's when you'd add the quotes. If you don't, if you just want to make a straight sentence that's not sarcastic, then you leave the quotes off. Okay. Okay. Would 
would it be better in a college essay to be less sarcastic or would that sort of thing be okay? What do you think about that? I think, you know, it's hard to say when you talk about one sentence. Um, I think you yeah. need to be you. And I think it depends on what else you're talking about in the essay. Um, you know, so I can't answer that directly. But I think it has to do with how you want to communicate what you're talking about that, you know, that story about yourself or, you know, it, for example, if and I'm just using this as an example, if you were known as that smart girl and and it bothered you, then I think having that sarcasm in there is good. On the other hand, if you really relish the fact that you're viewed as the smart girl, you wouldn't be sarcastic. Right. Right. OK. I see what you're saying. And would I capitalize that if I was going to kind of make it a title in a sarcastic manner or no? No, no need to capitalize. Okay. Thank you. That was all. And thank you so much for this webinar. It was super helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, non-social media person. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't mean to be sarcastic. I, I have a lot of respect for that. Like, I, if it wasn't for work, I wouldn't be on social media right now. Um, so, Lai Bing, um, you know, uh, we can't hear you, but I've seen your question uh, in the uh, the chat, and I will, I will, I will, I will ask Jennifer. What is essential for an outstanding essay? How to begin to write? I mean, the style and what is a strong introduction? So I guess, I guess what she's trying to get at is, is the, how do you start with a bang? You know, like, yeah. Yeah. it is, it is almost like a movie and the movie always starts with a bang. You see the big picture stuff and, and then the movie starts. Like, why do you start with that? Like, that, I guess that's what she's getting at. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's all about setting the hook. And that's, that's really tough to say. It's hard to give an example. Like, for example, if you were talking to me about a particular essay you wanted to write about, I'd be able to say, OK, tell me what the topic is, what you, what your focus is going to be. Then I can help you set the hook. But right now we're talking sort of generally, so it makes it a little bit tougher. Um, some people, when they set their hook, they start with like um, sort of a little anecdote at the beginning that is almost reads like a story. And then their next paragraph, they sort of step back from that story and kind of now they're in now they talk about what they really want to talk about, but it relates to that story. So there's different ways you can do that. Some people use a quote from somebody um, that they want to refer to that quote. Um, you know, it, it depends on your essay topic and what you're doing. So and I'm just giving an example here. Let's say your essay was about, um, you know, why do you want to come to our university? Some people might use a quote from a professor that they respect at that university. If they did their research, they could use that quote in the beginning of their essay and talk about how this particular professor, you know, they've read some of their writings, they're really interested and they want to learn from that professor and that's why they want to come to that university. So there's all different kinds of things you could do to set yourself apart and make your opening more interesting. But the most important thing to remember is you don't want to start your paper so that it sounds like everybody else because each application reader reads hundreds of essays. And, um, you know, people have asked me before, are essays really, re really read? And um, it's interesting, you know, I've heard different things. They are really read if you're applying to colleges, but some of the readers will read the first paragraph and then they'll read the last paragraph. And if they think those two paragraphs are good, then they'll read the middle. Or sometimes they skim just the first couple lines of each paragraph because basically they can tell in their very quick read of that essay if this person has a writing style and has um, an interesting personality or interesting story to share that is interesting enough to be considered. The, I, you know, the, uh, let me just say something here, and this is where we're going into the meat of this. What is interesting? You know, yeah. what, you know, like, like, is, is it good to say, oh, it needs to be good. It needs to be excellent. Like, what is excellent? What, like, what, what I mean, how do you stand out? Like, I, I think, I think we want to hear some, uh, like some granular details and examples of, of stuff you've read that you were like, wow, this was a, can All you, right. give, do you remember some examples? I'm putting on the spot here. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I actually just read an essay from a student, a scholarship all student. Um, earlier this week, I, she sent me um, six essays to review and um, I can't, you know, I can't reveal any details. Obviously, this is a student that I'm working with through Scholarship Owl, but I will just tell you that the essay that she wrote the, that I loved the most was about 
a pot, it sounds crazy, was about pot pie, right? Like chicken pot pie or beef pot pie. And she had a whole story to tell wrapped up about how this pot pie has, is a comfort food that she's returned to over and over again during difficult times in her life. It was a fabulous essay. It's one I'll never forget. And it doesn't mean that it was perfect. I, you know, I had advice for her. I gave her feedback and suggestions. But the theme of the essay was so mundane, but it was spectacular in the way she attacked the essay question. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't have to have some fabulous thing that you've done in your life to talk about. You know, a lot of students will say to me, you know, gosh, I'm supposed to write an adversity essay, but my life's been pretty good. I haven't really struggled. And it's like, then don't write an adversity essay. Choose a different prompt that talks about your achievements and talk about what you've done. Talk about your passion. Um, you the, know. The, some people here uh, were mentioning in the Q&A about, um, let's see, about a COVID-19 essay. And how do you talk about COVID? The, the person is saying, I, I feel so negative when I think about COVID and I don't want to be negative in the essay. Like, well, how can you spin this? Or or when you have COVID-19 essays, or is there a way around that? Or, or, just, or is it yeah. just sad? <laughs> yeah, I mean... Some people, you know, I have I've read some things people have written about COVID and some students, you know, talk about, you know, how much it changed their life. But then they put some sort of a spin on it and they talk about sort of the silver lining and what they learned about themselves, what they learned about their family and their community. Um, so if you don't want to sound too negative, you can do that. You can talk about the dramatic impact that it's had on you or your family or your community and how it changed everything. But then you can talk about the other side, that maybe this experience brought you closer to the people who you live with. Maybe it taught you that you're more resilient than you thought you were, right? So there's a way to take that trauma and the dramatic things that have happened and make it sound positive by the end of the essay so that it shows that you've overcome those challenges. On the other hand, if COVID has not particularly affected you or your family, right? If, it, if it's only affected you because you've had to learn online, for example, but if you don't have personal experience with COVID, it's okay to be honest about that. Don't make up something that isn't true for the sake of your essay. You know, so you can talk about that and you can say, you know, I hear all of these. And here's a perfect example. This is how I feel about COVID. Um, and I've talked about this with my own family, that I have a bit of guilt because I personally have not been all that negatively affected by it. At Scholarship Owl, we work remotely online. This is what I've been doing for years. So it's no big change for me to be working from home. That's what I do. Um, I haven't had COVID. I don't have a family member that's had COVID because we mask up when we go out. You know, it's been relatively easy and I still have my job. I'm still making money. That makes me feel bad because 200,000 people have died and millions ha have had COVID and had their life impacted. So if I were writing an essay about COVID, I would talk about that. I would talk about how awkward I feel to be actually thriving financially and personally in a very difficult time in our in our society. So there's so, all different ways. How is, do, you, do you think it's like, you know, the collective that why I'm supposed to feel guilty because you're know, supposed to be because everyone else, you know, is, is that how it works? That, that that's that's yeah. that's what I've wondered for myself. Right. <laughs> you know? So. I, there, there's another question uh, that kind of trails into this. Um, <clears throat> a person is asking, I'm quitting dance to go to college. How can I spin that not to be negative? Because she quit because of mental health issue and stress, uh, you know, which, which a lot of profession gives you. So how do you, how do you spin that to not, you make it about the mental health issue and stress and make it positive? Or, or should she or her or him, um, talk about, um, it being negative, is that a bad thing or, or should have to spin positive? It doesn't have to. I mean, I think, you know, there are students and I've met many of them who have worked really hard in a particular sport or particular activity. And then at some point they decide they're going to leave it behind them and focus on other things. Um, I think this often happens when it comes to college, because in some cases, they've sort of burnt out a little bit on that one activity that they focused on. In other cases, they feel like if they don't focus on their academics, they're going to fall behind. So there's different reasons why someone might decide to leave their sport or their performing arts activity behind them. And I think it's OK. Um, but I think you can also talk about what that brought to your life. So, for example, and I'm again, I don't know you and don't know how dance has impacted your life. But in theory, you could talk about how it taught you discipline. It taught you to focus. And um, maybe it brought you into a community of people that you have gotten to know and love over the years and it taught you how to compete. 
And all of these skills are things that you're going to take advantage of as you transition into college, focusing on your academic and your career. Yeah. I, I also would like to to mention the left right uh, right brain argument, and I feel I I I used I went to I used to be a dancer, a professional dancer. I went to Bali University in London, uh, and dancing is a completely different type of intelligence. Like when you're using your body, is actually defined as a different type of intelligence, and you exercise that intelligence. Uh, and I think that is worth mentioning in the essay. It's like you know, it is gives you a perspective of the world that you didn't have, a spectrum of of gravity, of balance, of of fidelity and it gives you it, it, it exercises your mind in a completely different way you know a lot of dancers can be like really bad mathematicians uh but mathematicians can't do the things nearly what dancers can so 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 dancing in itself uh the, the fact that you're quitting it it's like that made you stronger because you're bringing a different mindset to life into another profession, which will, they will always bleed over. Your skills will always bleed over and benefit you in a new profession and a new. So I don't necessarily say anything negative about it. You can spin it that way. It's like I want, I want to be a more wholesome person. I want to work on my this type. Of, we have emotional intelligence. We have body intelligence. We have logic. We the different type of intelligences in the body. So you can kind of you can look it up on Google and learn about it and use that as a as an angle and talk about that. So that was just one idea. Um, let, let's go to some of the, the questions. Uh, we have Diana. Diana. And by the way, I'm horrible with names. It's because I'm from Norway. <laughs> I, I still haven't learned to pronounce American names. <laughs> um, hi. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, um, well, I was the question you just answered. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, you're and welcome. Yeah, and I was wondering if I talked about some of the mental health issues, would that be seen as too negative? Because I've heard that colleges don't like to, won't admit like people who they think are risky, maybe. Hmm. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to say that anyone who's having some emotional issues or mental health issues or physical disabilities, learning disabilities, it's up to you if you want to reveal that information or not. Um, the positive about revealing that information is that if it's talked, if you're talking about who you are and it's a part of you and you want to share that, that's great. If you're a little un uncomfortable and you're worried about how you'll be perceived and if, if you don't want to take that risk, you don't have to. Um, but at the same time, if a college wouldn't admit you because of those issues, is that a good place that's for you? That's, you know, that's healthy and for where you want to be. Um, most universities do have really good support services. Um, so, you know, you'll, that's something you'd want to explore when you're researching the schools. That all said, um, if you're having some issues or have experienced issues and you want to talk about them in your essay, I think the focus, the, the way that I would do it is I would talk about the challenges you've experienced and what you've done to overcome those challenges, right? So, um, if you're under stress, if, if there was an incident that happened that's causing you stress or that's causing some issues for you, you want to talk about what happened and how you've responded, how you've grown through that experience. And it doesn't mean that you have to be completely well and better. You know, it's not like necessarily that it's an illness that you take a pill for and now it goes away. Even if it's something that you kind of are dealing with ongoing, it still shows your resilience if you can talk about what you've done to respond to it and how you're conquering that challenge. Yeah, I, I think it's, you know, just to chime in here, because I think like when, when you're younger, you know, you look at mental health issue, you think of it as like a really bad thing, <clears throat> you know, but I got to tell you, it's like nothing else than having a wound on your finger and, and then being repaired. It's a part of being a human. It's the organic body. And, and you know, we have flaws in our organic body and, and we have to adapt to the world and mental health issue. The fact that you are strong enough to come on and talk about it tells you you have an immense insight because I think everyone has mental issues on some level. But the problem is a problem is a problem when you don't know about the problem and I think as an adult reading this they will understand wow this person is very reflected they gotten far they understand because you can't fix something well you can't fix yourself if you think you don't have a problem <laughs> Right. So if you're arrogant, you go in the other route. Right. So so I think be confident in it. Uh, you know, uh, if you think personally is very severe, don't paint it severe. You know, paint it as something you overcame or, or just something you're dealing with and you're aware of. And, you know, it's all how you package it in. If, if you're worried, they're going to get worried. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
so so just just paint it as I have it under control. This is why I'm doing it. You're aware of it. So I think it's I think it shows strength that you come forward and talk about it. And I think a lot more people should talk about it because a lot more people need help in that area. So thank you for that. Yeah, thank and young you. people today, there's a lot of stress and depression and anxiety that you know that young people are dealing with. I mean, besides the normal issues that they've that young people have had for many years, this year in particular. There's a lot going on. There are people that are really stressed out, um, you know, and so I think it's OK to be authentic, be who you are. And that will come across in your writing and it might actually increase your chances of getting admitted. OK, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, how do I leave? I'll, I'll, <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> Hold on. OK. <laughs> Here thank we go. You. Okay, so uh, Sarah Muhammad, is, I think, is Europe. Thank you for waiting. And by the way, some of the answer takes a long time, so, uh, but we're trying to do the best we can. So, and I see a lot of people are waiting. Uh, we are, I'm sure Jennifer will go over, so don't worry, we'll get to all the questions. Uh, this is our favorite topic, by the way, essays, because we typically get a lot of questions on support. So we'd rather answer them here and get less support tickets. So bring it on. <laughs> so, Sarah. So hi, it's Zara. Um, hi, good night. So I've written my college essay from August, but I'm afraid to put it in. <laughs> um, reason, being, reason being is because um, I'm wondering if my topic is too common because I'm doing the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. And I, I was speaking about being bullied. Mm -hmm. So I kind of put myself in a David and Goliath situation. And then um, I compared myself now to then. So I'm wondering if, if I'm writing for a college essay, is it more of a reflection or a narrative? So, okay, so I just, I had trouble hearing a little bit of that. So you're asking, is it a narrative or what was the rest? All right, when you're writing a college essay, um, based on the lesson, lesson you have learned, is it a narrative or could it be a reflection? Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, you know, that really depends. I mean, I think it depends on the essay prompt and how you're approaching it. Um, mm -hmm. Usually, when people talk about doing a personal statement for college, they think of it as more of a narrative. Um, but I think it can also be a reflection. It just depends on how you want to format your your essay. Um, the main thing is you want to tell a story about your about something in your life, right? So if you're talking about bullying, I think you can write it either as a narrative or a reflection. Does that help? Yes, it's helpful. Um, a last question. Um, say this, it's it's about the same. Um, sorry. That's okay. So, do you think it is too common, like bullying itself? Because I was necessarily I was b bullied for my color. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's it is a common occurrence, but I don't think it's too common to write an essay about it. If you know what I'm saying. In other words. Mm -hmm who have been bullied or taken advantage of or hurt because of who they are, the color of their skin, their religion, um, their sexual preference, all of these things, they're common experiences that people have had, but each individual's person's experience is different. And, um, and if this is something that has impacted your life, absolutely, you should write about it and talk about it and share who you are and how it impacted you, how it hurt, and how you responded to it and how you've overcome that and leading you to who you are today. I'm, I don't know if I'm really allowed to really do this, but could I like read a small section and you tell me how it sounds like quickly? Um, I'd rather you email it to me only be, not okay. only if we're on the call, but because it's personal for you and I don't want mm -hmm. it to necessarily be broadcast. So, um, Adrian, maybe you can type my email address in the chat again. Yeah, it is on the sticky note. It's on the it's on the top under chat. Oh, sure. Yeah, and so you can uh, email me either the section of the essay or the whole essay, so I can look at it. And I'd be happy to give you my thoughts. 
All right, thank you so much, Ms. Jennifer. And I thank you guys for having this webinar. It has helped us really. You're well. During this COVID time, so thanks. Thanks for joining. All right. So again, um, you know, if you want your uh, essay reviewed and competition to six first one, <laughs> send an email to Jennifer uh, that is showing up in the room, uh, and then you will um, um, you're probably going to be likely the first among the first six and get your essay reviewed. Uh, and also, uh, we are running a poll that I want you guys to answer. <clears throat> uh, and right now is Discord and Facebook seems to be the two. Uh, in lead, and and is it so that Discord is more for younger generation and Facebook is more for someone like me? Because uh, I I only use Discord when I play game. I still play games, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, and I I personally I would if it were me I would say parent community on Facebook for sure. Yeah, and the uh, on Discord. And maybe another Discord. I mean, maybe another Facebook for students as well. Before uh, we move um, to the next one in line, um, I'm going to ask a question from the room, uh, the chat room. Um, you know, it's... There's there's very much the same type of questions in terms of like uh, their... I'm, so I will write two questions and then maybe you can answer both of them. Uh, okay. I'm writing an essay about my career choice and how I came to that decision. I did not choose my career until a few months ago because I'm so indecisive. How can my essay be interesting? And then <laughs> I have a concern. I would like to talk about life goals, but they're sort of general. I would like to talk about them to paint myself as someone that wants to make an impact through engineering, but I want the essay to sound genuine and I'm arrogant and cheesy. You know, and here's another question. Do you not all feel they're the same question? <laughs> we mentioned religion, by the way. Um, that's one. And, and then someone is saying, and then I would just bundle them in together because I'll feel the same. Do you have to use current data journals, reliable references for a great opening on essays? And what I have to say to that, if there's the data points on it and journals and references, probably a lot of people are doing it. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, so let's start with that. So basically there, how do we make it more interesting? And I guess that's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter what topic you're talking about. How do you reframe it? So it's interesting, regardless if your past job, if it's your career, if it's this, if it's that, that's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that goes back to what I said earlier in the presentation about show and not tell, right? First of all, every single person is interesting. So you need to understand you are an interesting person, right? And you have a unique story that you can share with the world through this paper or through this essay. And um, what I would say is if you were talking to a friend of yours and they asked you the same question and they said, gosh, I just don't know if I'm interesting. You'd probably say, oh my gosh, you are so interesting. Let me tell you what's interesting about you, right? So think about that for yourself. There are things that make you unique. Um, special skills, special abilities, interest areas, volunteer service, um, you know, and volunteer service could be anything from things you do at your church to, you know, taking care of your siblings. If you're from a large family and you take care of all of your siblings, that's interesting, right? So anything that you do or that you find important in your life is going to be interesting to other people. But the key is how you write about it and how you make it sound interesting. So if there's something that you love to do and if you've got a passion for something, you need to sound passionate in your writing. Um, you know, you don't want to sound detached. Um, so I guess that would be my best advice is to write with passion, write with emotion, be connected. Um, I've had situations where, um, and I can give two examples, um, not scholarship all students, students I've worked with privately, where both of them were creative writing majors. And so as, a, as an essay support person, I went into the, to the idea of working with them with the assumption that I would get some great first drafts. And in both cases, I was really underwhelmed by their writing. And I thought, my gosh, you know, they're, they're majoring in creative writing. They should be good writing. What's going on here? They both had chosen essay prompts from the Common App list that they were not connected to. You know, they just kind of thought, oh, I'll, I'll write about this one. 
but then the, each one of them didn't really have anything of interest that they could talk about. But when I worked with them further, I was able to learn more about them. And then I was able to say, you know what? I don't think that's the right prompt for you. You're not excited about it and you don't sound excited about it. And they were like, no, I'm not excited about it. And it's like, well, then pick something you are excited about. Um, and uh, I have another example, you know, sometimes you forget it's, it's hard to write about yourself. It's hard to, you know, you might be thinking you're going to come across as bragging or arrogant. And so people tend to be more humble and they don't want to really sell themselves in their essay, which makes total sense. Um, I was working with a student who was writing an essay about an incident that happened in her band class. She was involved in band at school and her essay was kind of blah. There wasn't a whole lot to it. And then she mentioned in passing that she could play seven instruments. And I said, wait a minute, what did you say? And she said, seven instruments. And I said, why isn't that in your essay? And she yeah. literally said, do you think that's important? And it's like, of course that's important, right? Yeah. She just took it for granted. Yeah. She play seven instruments and thought nobody would care. And it was like, no, this is huge, right? And she was self-taught in most of them. So, you know, these are the kinds of things where if you can't figure out for yourself what's interesting about you, Ask somebody who is in your life who cares about you. Ask a parent, ask a friend, ask a teacher, and say, what is it about me that makes me interesting or that makes me different from other people my age? I, and I, they'll have answers for you. I think this is a, a this is a great topic because we, we always come in, into this topic where I feel that the, the younglings are a little insecure uh, and they feel overwhelmed in the big world that they don't matter. And my, my answer to you, you matter. You are, the, you are our future. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you really matter. And if you don't think you matter, then we're, we're, we're in a big trouble. Okay. Because you are the future. You are going to build a new world. You're going to solve today's problem. You go, you are the one that's going to solve COVID-19 or the next one that comes. You are the one that's going to be our policeman. You are the one that's going to sit up and potentially some of you might be the president. Okay. Like it's important for us that you look at yourself as important. And if you don't think you're important or you, if you feel insignificant, enriching yourself with experiences. Okay. Go out there and volunteer. Uh, and especially like, like if you feel you're a victim to something, like be a part of that solution. Join, uh, for example, we just talked to an organization, um, that works with, uh, with helping black women with education. That's all they do. Wow, they need help, you know, organizations like that, animal organizations, online organizations, community managers and monitors like there's there's people need help everywhere. So let's say if you have a mental health problem, why don't you work for a mental health volunteer organization, you know, and then eventually it will solve your own problems or it will enrich in your uh, knowledge about the topic. So and that can help you with your essays writing later on. I, I the one thing like I, I would say, if you're young, the biggest advice I can give volunteer everywhere, you're going to learn so much. So when you go into the workforce, you're a lot better prepared. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a uh, will. Uh, next. Well, can, can you hear me and say, yeah. And we can see you. I'm so glad you turned your camera on. Yes. This is okay. inspiring. <laughs> All right. So my question is, we've gone over how one of the most important things to any admissions officer is how to make it stand out. What's the best way to think like an admissions officer? What's the best way to get the edge to make it just a little bit more strategically oriented to stand out to them in every way possible? What's sort of the mindset that you need to adapt for that? So that's really interesting. Um, I don't know, you know, what kinds of colleges you're targeting, but I'm going to use the example of if you're targeting, uh, you know, pretty selective schools, elite schools, IVs, or just, you know, if you're targeting your state flagship, that's hard to get into, right? For any of those, they are looking for students who are going to be a good fit with their campus culture. Now, interestingly enough, with COVID, a lot of you will be possibly going to college online. Certainly th those of you who are current college students may be going to college online. So campus culture questions, it's a little different right now, but let's hope, you know, for those of you who are applying for admission for the fall, hopefully by then most campuses will be back on in person. Um, if you, if this goes back to the research portion of um, my presentation where you can look at each college you're pursuing and look to see what they say on their website about how they make their admission decisions. And, um, you know, if you look at what Harvard says and what Yale says, you'd think, well, they were looking for the same thing, right? Interestingly enough, they don't say it the same way. So each university has sort of that spin. 
Um, they look for students who will not only be a good fit as far as you know, doing well in school, working hard and having the work ethic and all of that. They look for students that will make a unique contribution. So, you know, they're going to be looking at what your skills are, what your interests are, what your passions are. And they think about what organizations they have on campus. And they think, is this person going to fit somewhere? Is this person going to make a difference? So that's what I would say is to do the research on the universities you're pursuing. Look at what they're looking for and find those elements in yourself that you can bring forward in your essays to sound like you will make an interesting contribution to the campus and not just somebody who will join things but somebody who will be a leader. They really want leaders. And um, so if you can create that, you know, talk about what you're interested in, show your leadership skills, talk about what you've done in high school to be a leader in your high school. Those are the kinds of things that will translate and set you apart. Got it. Uh, I have one more question. Sure. So you talk about how we need to make our interests and our passions and contributions shine forth. Well, probably my two biggest, like two of my biggest interests are like, uh, the law and politics. I do teen court, which is where I do legal work for teens who are uh, convicted of crimes. I do okay. extemp speaking for my school, which is giving a speech about politics a few times. And uh, so I, it's, uh, through my interest in politics, I've really like learned a lot and understand meeting people of different beliefs. I've understood a lot about like getting along with people, even though we may not agree and like working together. But how do I, but like with today's contentious political climate, how do I fit that into an essay without accidentally letting something slip forth and an officer, uh, that an admissions officer may disagree with and may subconsciously impact their decisions? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, what I would say is, you know, depending on what the question is, the specific prompt you're using, you could talk about both sides of an issue without revealing what your perspective is. Um, so you can talk and you can also talk, of course, about the bipartisanship in Washington and what's going on there. Um, you can talk about how it's affected you as a student and what it's made you think about, um, how it's helped you conduct your life and plan your future. So you don't have to reveal your political leanings, but you can talk about being around it, being in the environment. Um, you can also talk about how in this day and age with social media and with the news and everything else that it's given you an opportunity to realize that there's a lot of different perspectives on each subject. And um, so you could talk about the impact of the media and social media on how people behave politically. Um, there's a whole field of study called political psychology. Uh, so, you know, if you wanted to explore that a little bit and look into that, these are all topics that people would find very exciting. Um, I don't know what your political leanings are, but um, that's also something when you're doing your research for the universities you're pursuing, you're going to want to kind of check out the direct the political leanings of the campus you're approaching. A lot of universities tend to be more liberal. And so if you tend to be more liberal, you're going to find an easy fit. If you tend to be more conservative, you're going to have to look a little more closely to see which universities will have the kinds of organizations and support systems that will let you speak your mind as a conservative. Got it. Thanks a bunch. That's all the questions I have for you. Okay. Thanks a bunch for the webinar. It was really helpful. I'm so glad. Thank you very much for attending. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to go to Brianna. Yeah, I'm so happy whenever I can pronounce the name. Brianna, I can say that one. <laughs> oh, that's me, right? Um, yep. It's actually Brianna, but it was this. <laughs> I, I had a feeling that that's how it was supposed to be pronounced. Oh dear, oh dear, I'm making a fool out of myself. Yeah. So um, my question is that, like, um, do you think it's a good idea to write about you migrating? So for instance, I came from Jamaica to like America, like two years ago. So do you think that would be a good topic to write about? And like, how would I go about like, writing that and like starting it and make it interesting yeah uh you, the fact that you've migrated and come to america is interesting right coming from jamaica that's very interesting uh so yes i would definitely write about that you can talk about sort of you know what led you to make this decision about the culture shock when you got here um i would you know especially based on the conversation we just had uh with the last student i'm sure the political climate here has been something to adjust to um, so there's probably a lot that you would be able to talk about. 
Um, universities like students that have a lot of diverse experiences. That's something that's really important to them. They like people who have traveled to different places, who have lived in different places. So that's a part of you that I think would be exciting for a university to read about, for sure. Okay, thank you. And I'm another question, like, in the essay, do you think I should, like, include, oh, I transition and, oh, like, oh, already oh, was for me and, like, the struggles I face in transitioning into, like, a new school and a whole new environment? Sure, absolutely. If it's something that you care about and that mattered to you and that you have something to say about it, absolutely. Okay, thank you. That's it. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, um, the next one on the list is Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I just wanted to know if, um, are there any topics that you should stay away from or like any tired topics that you constantly hear or like if it's too touchy to talk about? Yeah, um, you know, I think first of all, depending on where you're applying, if you're using the Common App, everybody gets the same choices of essays to write from, to write about. So, you know, they already, it won't matter if the topic is tired because they have, you know, thousands and thousands of students that are using that app and everybody's gonna pick some of the same questions, right? So I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's more your take on the topic. As far as things to avoid, um, yeah, I would say certain subjects might be a little bit controversial that you might choose to avoid. And I'm, you know, basically it's anything that would be considered controversial politically, I think, or, um, you know, anything from, Gosh, I mean, there are so many, obviously reviewing, re uh, revealing your political views on a topic. If you've got a feeling about abortion, um, if you've got a feeling about the death penalty, if you've got a feeling about, um, you know, contraceptives, um, about LGBTQ rights, these are all things where you have to decide for yourself if there's something that's controversial and you want to talk about it, is it a risk that you want to take? And in some cases, I say, yes, take the risk, right? but it really depends on your perspective. Um, if you're applying, for example, to a religious university, a, like a Jesuit university or something like that, you're gonna wanna be very careful about what you say in your essay unless you have a more conservative view on that particular subject. If you're applying to a public university, they're probably a little bit more uh, open to different perspectives, and so it might not be as risky to do that. So I think it depends on the universities you're applying to and what your particular view is that you want to express. If that makes sense. Okay, and I have, yeah, it is, thank you. And I have one more. Um, do you have any advice for international students applying? Or like, is it like more difficult for us to get scholarships or is it like the same kind of process? So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. International students do struggle a little bit more to get scholarships. The best scholarships for international students tend to be from the universities themselves. Um, we do have some scholarships on the Scholarship Owl platform that you can apply for as an international student. So if you're a member of Scholarship Owl, I highly recommend you know, that you apply to them. But in general, the biggest and best scholarships will come directly from the universities. Um, and on every university website, if you go to their scholarship page, they will tell you if you have to be an international student to qualify for a particular scholarship or not. And if they, they usually will have an international students page where you can find information and resources that will help you to determine how likely it is that that school might offer scholarships to international students. Um, and you can also Google that online. There are lists of colleges that tend to offer more scholarships to international students than others. So that's information that's out there that you can find. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, I, I just have one more, I forgot. Okay. Um, is it like kind of risky to try to make your essay funny and try to, you know, grab your reader's attention through like amusement, like through that way? <laughs> You know, I think humor can be great. It's, you know, a lot of students don't use humor in their essays. And so if you do and if you're effective with it, that'll help you stand out. And it'll be something refreshing for the person reading your essay. So I think it's a great idea. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Uh, Adrian, you're muted. 
Hello. Thanks for looking at my lips. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I knew you were staring. <laughs> no, I was just no, I've, I, so I was going to ask you, how are you, how are you holding up? You know, you're asking a lot. Of, are you ready for some more? Or? Oh, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> I heard you're going. But thank you so much. This is very helpful. I'm learning a lot. Uh, you know, one thing I wouldn't mention, do we have some essay writing tools on Scholarship Owl? We do have essay writing tools. That sounds like a great lead in. <laughs> um, so what we have in Scholarship Owl, it's a pretty new feature. Um, it's a text editor that actually allows you to write your essay right in our application. And it is similar to Google Docs. So if you're familiar with Google Docs or if you're familiar with Microsoft Word, you know, it looks very similar and it acts similar. Um, it does have a proofreading tool in there as well so that it'll tell you if it notices a spelling error or a typo or something. So it'll alert you and you can take a look and make that correction if you want to, which is, I think, a neat little feature. Um, there's also a feature at the top of the, um, the text editor where you can easily see the essay prompt that you are responding to. So that's kind of nice. You can just click a button and the essay prompt will reveal itself. So there's some neat things in there um, that make it easy to use and it makes it easier to apply for scholarships. Um, with Scholarship Owl, you know, we know that students want scholarships, but they, we also know that they don't want to have to work very hard to get them. That's, I mean, who would, right? If you can write easier, faster, if you can apply faster, these are all tools we all would want, right? So we have really done a lot with Scholarship Owl, with our platform to make it easier for students to apply for more scholarships more often. Um, we have a really relevant matching process. Um, for some of you who may have tried other scholarship websites and you've been matched and you go, gosh, why did I get matched to that? Um, we've heard from students that our matching is better. So I think that is helpful. Um, you're able to pick scholarships that interest you and save them. You can hide the ones that you think are irrelevant to you that you want to ignore. So there's a lot of features um, that make it easier and faster to apply for scholarships. Yeah, and, and, and just to be completely transparent, I mean, the I, you know, why should you apply to a platform? You know, that's the question. It, the time saving is what it is. You'll save time. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, because we have, you know, listed a lot you don't have to go and look for. I mean, you can find some on fast web, uh, but we really, we really is into time saving, which we know that scholarship, uh, is a numbers game. So you need to apply for as many as you can as fast as you can. <laughs> that, that's really what it comes down to. Uh, so, um, anyway, um, let me say one more thing on this while we're talking. Um, I know I've got many high school seniors right now that are on this webinar with us and maybe some transfer students that are going to be transferring as juniors and you're all writing all of these college application essays and you've worked really, really hard. You can actually leverage them and repurpose them to apply for scholarships. So keep them right. And wow. you can actually upload them to scholarships in our platform if you want to apply with the exact same essay. Or let's say you want to look at it and maybe make slight changes and then upload it. So if you're writing, you know, let's say five, six, ten different essays to go to college, take those essays and use them again to apply for scholarships because there are hundreds of scholarships in our platform and many of them have very similar essay prompts. So it's a great way to, you know, repurpose what you're already doing. Cool. So we'll move on to Christian. Okay. How can I help you? Uh, you're kind of quiet, but I hear you. It's a face. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, so, just try to speak a little closer to the mic if you can. Okay. So. Okay, there you go. Um, I have a very particular scholarship that I'm applying to right now. And there's this really, really specific um, essay that I have to write. And it's quite long. It's unusually long, at least for me. It's 5,000 words long. Wow. And I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm just I'm just stuck. I'm really stuck and I'm missing 300 words. I'm stuck on a very specific topic and it's talking about how I can benefit the program that I'm applying to. So my question was a bit about how can I make uh, sort of my skills and my attributes a bit more grand, a bit like more impressive or a bit more filling because I'm missing 300 words. Well, let me ask you a question. Is it maximum 500, I mean, I'm sorry, a maximum of 5,000 words or is it a 5,000 oh. word essay? It's a 5,000 word essay. Interesting, because that's pretty unusual. Usually they'll give you a maximum. Yes, I know, <laughs> but it's, it's, a, it's a very unusual scholarship. <laughs> okay. I can't really mention it because of disclosure of things. Yeah, but, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. 
So um, that's really interesting. Um, and that's a really long essay to have to write. Um, you know, kudos for you to uh, for tackling that. Um, what I would say is, um, I, gosh, I'd love to see your essay because I could give you more specific feedback without, you know, without reading it. It's hard for me to know. But um, what I will say is think about what you've written and if there's any in details or facts about yourself that you haven't revealed yet that are relevant to the topic, you could add them. Um, you could try lengthening your sentences a little bit. Um, you know, but my guess is there's probably something you didn't include that you could include about yourself or about your situation. That would be my guess, is, you know, because most people leave something out because they think maybe it's not important. And obviously you don't want to put unimportant things in your essay, but it doesn't mean that it's unimportant just because you think maybe it is, if that makes sense. You know, um, I would love to read your essay. Can you can you enter our Halloween contest? Yes, we do. Enter our Halloween contest. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm not like, sure if I have time, but I'll try. I'll try. You know, <laughs> go and get one of those red noses and, and put a picture of yourself and do it right yeah, off the call. And, yeah. and Jennifer will be uh, <laughs> be allowed to. Uh, yeah. Uh, so on another note, I just been sharing a file, uh, the essay checklist. So if you go under file in your panel, uh, if you see that, it, it's now because I got a lot of questions on this. So the checklist All is right. available, but it will also come in an email. So uh, with the replay, just as you know. Sure, I'll look forward to it. Cool. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank Have you. Yeah. All right, who's still in the room here? Who do we have? We have um, Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi, can you guys see and hear me? Yeah, yeah. we love it. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Very good. Um, okay. So, um, first off, will this webinar be recorded and sent to us? Yes. Okay. Because uh, I had like joined in late. Okay. Um, I'm writing my college essay. I want to write about like a tough like discrimination I felt like in middle school, like the first time like this happened to me. And um. Would it be a, like, a bad essay topic? I want to write what happened and what I've learned and how I'm trying to educate people on, you know, why you shouldn't do it. Yeah. I, think that's I, wanna, like, I wanna educate people on my religion and say, you know, oh, you know, it's actually this and not that. Um, is it a good essay topic? Because I don't want like any, um, bias or whatever from the, from whoever is reading my uh, essay. Yeah, no, I think that's a great essay topic. Um, as far as, you know, should you talk about religion? That's the individual choice of the person writing the essay. But it sounds like this is something that is important to you, important to your life, and that it's helped form who you are. So absolutely. Um, you know, as I said, most universities tend to be more liberal leaning and they're looking for diversity and they want representation. If you're applying for universities that are more conservative, that's where you might want to be a little bit more careful. But other than that, I would say go for it. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, um, yeah, I, I feel. Oh, yeah, let's go back to the the, the insecurity thing. Be, be, if you're into religion, or if you go really deep into, that, be proud of that. That is who you are, and that is that is the path you you chose, and that's what the world needs. It wants you to be passionate about something, and I think that's what comes down to the essay. Are you passionate about what you're doing? And typically, the essay. Is, um, readers probably learn a lot from people with other perspectives and talking about their passions. So I, I would say talk about whatever you feel you're passionate about because that's going to come through the essay because it, it, it's yours. It, it's in your heart. So, yeah. Sure. All right. Thank you. And uh, another question. I need, to write, well, I need to write two essays for the college I'm applying to. So now I know the first topic, which is great. But since I'm applying test optional to that college, um, I need to write an essay about my volunteering uh, experience, how my leadership while volunteering has influenced my community in a positive way. And so I've been part of uh, a pretty big um, volunteer group, but it's rather private. So I do not want to share that, uh, um, you know, very private. 
but I've been part of it. You know, like I can I can talk about it to some extent. Okay. Um, uh, how do I? How would I um, write about it without sounding like cliche? Like, oh, you know, I did this. You know, I've a volunteer here. It's been so amazing. You know, like people like yeah, you know, everyone like has to like volunteer in high school to some extent. You know, meet community service hours stuff like that. Sure. You know this, but how do I make it more original? Yeah, I mean, you know, without knowing specifically what the organization was, what I would say is to focus on projects or events that you were involved in. Um, you know, how many hours about did you volunteer for this organization? Um, over, I want to say at least 100. Okay. And it was over what span of time? Uh, four years okay. through high school, but I've done um, way before. I've started in... Um, Elementary or middle school. Okay, with the same organization? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So that's something I would talk about too. You know, you can talk about how this has been a lifelong interest and passion of yours that you've been involved with it. Um, I don't know if you have been a leader in any particular project or activity that they've been involved in, but if so, you can talk about your leadership. You can talk about um, what this has meant to you. The other thing you could do is you could take one specific incident that happened related to that volunteering experience. And you can expand on one small thing that happened and how it impacted you. Um, so that's another tactic and a way to, to make something that you think might be mundane become more interesting. If you can talk about that moment in time and how it affected you. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, thank you so much. You guys have a great night. Thank you. I see uh, more. Um, thank you so much, Amber. I saw some more questions in here uh, about uh, topics. Can I talk about this? Can I talk about that? And stuff like that. Like one thing I want to say, uh, and it, 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 you know, and I, I keep saying it in every webinar. It's like you know, you're going to attract people, um, you know, who like you for the way you behave. So you might as well behave what is the closest to who you feel you are. Yes, absolutely. Are you attracting the people who like you for who you are rather than the like you for who you're not? Because regardless, there's going to be people who don't like you. Like for, for anything you do, there's going to be someone who don't like it regardless. So be yourself in these essays, you know, be something you're passionate about. And if the university doesn't accept it, maybe, maybe that wasn't for you. You know, uh, it's, and, and that goes in life too. be yourself and you'll attract the people who like you for who you are and not for the fakeness because you think that's, you know, uh, they want you to behave a certain way. And I, I don't, I don't look at it that way in this world. Uh, I, I keep my own weirdness. So, uh, and it's important that you guys do it too so for sure uh, seth i think you're next yes i can't i came back and take advantage of the opportunity uh, <laughs> so this it's good because these will be the last uh these will be the last one we accept so after this we'll we'll end uh oh, so we're we're going on 40 minutes over here and jennifer is doing an amazing job thank you jennifer you're welcome i'm All gonna right. make my three what questions is, for you <laughs> i'm gonna make my three last questions as quick as possible so okay. uh uh Ms. Jelena at Scholarship Pilot, she's contacted me several times and, and gave me access to membership, although I, I thought I was already a member because I have an account and is asking for a month, $20 monthly, quarterly, $15 is, is asking for, for, uh, for like money as a membership. I thought it was free. Okay, so Scholarship Owl, there is a free trial, but then after you've completed your free trial, then there is a monthly fee or a quarterly fee or an annual fee, depending on how you're choosing to pay. Um, it is a low fee. Uh, if you're paying monthly, it's $9 a month. Um, and I've had a lot of students ask, and I know Adrian has as well, you know, why, why do we pay for something when we're applying for scholarships? We need money for college. Totally get that, makes sense. Yeah. Um, what we're doing with Scholarship Owl is we've created a platform that is a productivity tool. It allows students to apply for many scholarships faster, more easily, more simply to make their lives easier. So you're not paying to apply for scholarships. You're, what you're doing is you're paying for access to a system that allows you to apply for more scholarships more often. So that is why there is a fee, why it's not free. Um, but there is an initial free trial for seven days, and you can apply to as many scholarships as you want to for free during that time while you get to know the platform and see if it's something that you want to continue with. 
if you do decide to continue with it, you can cancel at any time. Um, so it's not like, you know, and if you want to cancel and you've already paid for a month or something, we can refund you for the month that you're in the middle of that you're canceling. So um, we have a very good customer support team that will help with that if needed. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're definitely not perfect. Uh, we are trying the best we can to help. And unfortunately, we have to charge for, for the staff and the services we're offering. But, but we are, we're not a company that's, that's running on high profit. Uh, we are a very slim team and we're doing the best we can to add value. I appreciate y'all and uh and uh the the PDF document for the essay checklist and the members only. I clicked on it, I couldn't get access to it. How can I take access to it? Mm. The file that um that Adrian posted? Yeah, that, I clicked on it, said I was sharing it, but I couldn't access it. Okay. <clears throat> can someone else uh, raise their hand uh, or or in the chat if I can see someone else having problem with it too? Um if I have shared it and it says that is sharing. So, um, did some, if someone successfully downloaded it, can they just say yes in the um, the comment section, please? It says I'm sharing it right now, but and you're clicking it, and then what? Yes, people say yes. So I hit share. And then... A lot of people can download it as a PDF. So there might be that it opens in a separate browser. Uh, or trying to open a tab, maybe. Uh, but this seems like a lot of people are able to download it. So, uh, so Seth, why don't you drop your email in here, and I will personally send it to you from my email as an attachment, making sure that you get it. Okay? The, I'm putting it in the chat right now. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you for all the opportunities. I appreciate it. No, well, you're welcome. Thank you for joining the the webinar. It's a pleasure to have I you. Look. I look forward to being the first uh, person to request to speak on the next webinar. <laughs> I look I'm forward over, to seeing you there. <laughs> I'm an overachiever. I take advantage of all opportunities. I'm involved in several organizations and extracurricular activities. And That's so I look, awesome. I'm going to put that on uh, essay if I, if I have an op opportunity to express myself with an essay like that. Absolutely. Looking forward to reading your essays. Okay. Good night. Thank you very much. Okay, so next one is Ryan. Are you there? Yeah, can you see me? Yes. Yeah. Hi, good thank to see you. First of all, thank you. This has been super helpful. I just had one question. So, um, or I guess two questions. Is the essay proofreading, can we buy that Olive Card or does that come with a membership? How does that work? Um, you can be a VIP member, and if you are a VIP member, then you get essay review of one essay per month, um, where I would help you directly. Um, I'm a little bit easy, <laughs> I guess I would say. I don't make people do just one a month because I know that you know everybody's applying for colleges like right now. So rather than you know make you do it piecemeal one a month, you know if you've got a couple of them, I'll read them you know in the same time period and stuff. So. Um, because I think it's important, right? I don't want to make you wait. But yeah, so that is a service we offer through our VIP service. Um, and you can call customer service and they can tell you about that if you have any questions about it. Okay, sweet. And then the other question I had was on the social media part of the um, October challenge thing, does our account need to be public? Uh, it needs to be public so that we can see it. Okay. Right? Um, and so you don't have to use your name on the account. You can make up your own handle, you know, if you don't yeah. want it to be like your main account, which I understand okay. if you don't want to put your costume on in front of your friend's account, the account that they see, just create a new one with a new handle. And then when you email me, tell me the Instagram handle you're using so I can check to make sure that you've actually entered. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So Jennifer, what do you think, like for those who don't have Instagram, will we allow them to send us the uh, video or or um, or photo on email, and then we'll post it on our channel. I guess we can do that. We can do that if they want to do that. that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your help. You're welcome. So the next one, <clears throat> I'm not even going to pronounce. Try to pronounce that name because I've I've offended so many people today. So so please, the one who is left, please start speaking. <laughs> hey, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so it's a Mumtaz. Mumtaz. Okay. Yes. Hi. Yeah, it's an Arabic name. It's hard to pronounce. <laughs> um, so I just had one question, and it's very broad. I hope you can answer it. Um, so I don't 
so for my essay like i wasn't answering like a specific prompt i know like a prompt to answer is like to pick any like essay but you have right. written, like to just like answer any question and like i feel like my essay is very broad like i was talking about um i talk about like in, in, like i just talk about like everything in my life that happened and it's maybe it's lengthy like it's it's about about 900 words so like two pages and a half um i just talk about like everything that happened in my life and my, like the challenges in my life and how i how it overcame them it's not i'm not answering like a specific prompt my essay isn't really specific like i feel like is that like is that bad um, it's not bad as long as your essay is cohesive and has your own theme that you've applied. I'm more interested and concerned about your length. Is this for the Common App? Um, no, um, I'm kind of applying colleges like individually on their websites. So I'm just like, I'm just sending one, like one college, I'm, I'm one college essay to all the colleges on their websites. Okay. And do, do they have a maximum word count? Um, most of them just say like one to two pages. Um, okay. But I, I feel like it's fine if it goes over like a little bit, like they're not very... Um, specific in what okay. they want. Okay, cool. So um, I just want to make sure there wasn't a maximum. have a minimum of 250 words or more, which okay. is, you know, that's very little. So, but they don't have a maximum. It's more just like one to two pages. Okay. So, um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like what you're kind of talking about is more of a personal statement about you and about your life. And that's a very common sort of um, application essay. So I think it's just fine. I would just say, even if you don't have a specific prompt you're answering, I find it really helpful to create my own prompt mm -hmm. so, that, so that I make sure that I'm sticking to the topic throughout that I want to talk about, right? So find a formulate a way to ask yourself a question that does not appear at the top of your paper, but that you can put aside and just go, okay, here's what I wanted to answer. And now let me see if I'm actually answering it the way that it should be answered. If that makes yeah. Sense. So for me, like, I wasn't born in the United States. I moved here when I was younger and I like I lived in refugee camp and things like that. And like I just talked about my past life and coming to the US and how that was a change. And just like I feel like it's just a like, broad overview of my life. And it's not like like a specific incident, but more of just like a like my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking like maybe that's not good or I don't know. I would say if you you can talk about that, but you might talk about it in the sense of you know, here's who I am and where I came from and how it impacted me and made me who I am today. That's okay. sort of the, the the spin, I guess, that I would put on that. So okay. you want to talk about what happened to you and how it made you who you are today and what you're going to learn from your experience as you move on to college. Okay. And then do you think it's good to say like um, all your, like, um, I guess like a, like a few of your struggles, like, like, um, like, you know, moving here and then, you know, like the challenge and then I have struggled with like stuttering and just like um, stuff like that. Like, is it good to have more than one struggle or like challenge to write about yeah. in your, like in one essay? You can. I think, again, it depends on how you're structuring it. Okay. Um, and it depends on what else is in the application that you're s completing, because sometimes you'll have an opportunity in a college application if they say like, additional information or is there anything else you want to share sometimes if there's something that's a little bit out of place in your essay you can find a way to put it into another part of the college application if that helps you okay all right okay thank you so much for answering the You're questions welcome. good luck okay. to you thank you bye bye Hi. all right so we have one left okay hello Hi, good day. So I was here earlier, but now, because this is the first time I'm hearing about you guys. So I was here earlier and I'm trying to sign up for your page, but there's this part that says college enrollment dates. Now I'm, in, I'm extremely new to the US. So I do not understand, like I get when you say high school graduation dates, mm -hmm. but when you say college enrollment dates and college graduation dates, Okay. So, for example, when are when will you be attending college? Are you going to start in the fall, or are you a college student now? Yeah, next I'm starting next um next year. Okay, I'm a so senior. Then you would say like um August 2021 or September 2021, approximately the month and year of when you're going to start, and then your graduation mm -hmm. date. Are you going to be um, an undergraduate student? You're coming in as a freshman. Is that yes. right? Okay, so then you would say four, the four years later. So if you're starting in fall 2021, you're probably graduating. 2025. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. And you'd say like May 2025 or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. If anyone here tried to sign up and it doesn't fit in, then choose non traditional student and not listed and then go from there just so you can create an account. Yeah. And Miss Jennifer, I was the one who was asking you about the thing. I emailed it to you. Okay, great. I haven't had a chance to check my email, obviously, but I'll take a look. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. It has been Take a care. pleasure. Bye-bye. Well, Jennifer, uh, you went uh, 50 minutes over. Well, I just want to say one more thing before we log off here. Um, you know, there's a debate tonight. I encourage everyone to watch the debate. I encourage everyone to be informed and, and do your citizen job. If, you, if you're a voting age, vote. Whatever side you're on, just be part of it. You know, should we really watch a show where they are forcefully muting the participants? <laughs> well, you know what? I, I just think it's important that everybody watch and participate and be in fact. I, I, I agree. I agree. I already voted, so I'm done with that. So I'm not going <laughs> to. Uh, but uh, that that's good to Chris create awareness about that. Uh, and you know what I really like is that students are getting more and more involved th these new generations in politics before they didn't care and now they're like, we understand that this is going to impact us so we better we better pay attention <laughs> so. yeah, absolutely yeah cool. well, thank you so much uh, and um, and again, we have a competition go to scholarship I'll dot com forward slash blog. Uh, send an email to Jennifer F at scholarship com that you entered the competition. And, you know, uh, if you stay that long and, you know, you send, there might be a good chance that you will, you will uh, get for, um, essay review by Jennifer. Yes. And everyone just, if, if whoever's emailing me, if anybody emails me tonight, know that I may not get back to you tonight. It may not be till tomorrow, but, um, but I will respond to everyone that sends me an email. Are you telling me you're not going to work until midnight? I didn't say I'm not going to work, but I'm just saying I, you know, <laughs> it's, evening, it's evening where I live. So yeah. <laughs> I probably will be responding to people tomorrow. Uh, cool. Uh, thank you so much. Um, this will the replay will go out. Um, and uh, thank you guys for showing up. We really appreciate it. I mean, talking to you guys is what, you know, helps us during motivate us to do our job. Uh, that we get to see your faces and hear our problems because that's why we're doing it. We're doing it to help you guys. So, for sure. Cool. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.